Walter Isaacson has a new subject out, it's gene editing, uh, coming out with a new book available on March 19th, a couple days away, The Codebreaker, about Jennifer Doudna, gene editing, and the future of the human race. Walter joins us this morning to discuss. Walter, it's great to have you on the program. Good morning. Good to see you, Carl. Uh, you've had some great uh, publicity around the book. It's been fun to watch it roll out. CBS over the weekend, our colleagues at Squawk Box earlier in the week. Has there been a, a topic or a question that you've not yet been asked that you think <laughs> readers need to know about? Well, I think it's interesting to know about Jennifer Doudna and her colleagues, because, as you know, and everybody in business knows from watching this show, uh, there's a mix of competition and cooperation that has to happen, whether it was Steve Jobs and Bill Gates in the digital world or now in the world of biotech. And certainly there's been a great patent battle between Jennifer Doudna and Emmanuel Charpentier, that group that won the Nobel Prize for gene editing and are now using it to, to detect coronavirus, and a group at uh, MIT led by Fong Zhang and others who have been fighting on the patent battle. But the cool thing is they form companies like Sherlock and Mammoth that will soon go public and do great detection technology. But when they turn their attention to using these tools against COVID and the coronavirus, in my book, I explain how it kind of reminded them that they're in this for a higher purpose. So they're in there to help humanity. And they're putting those discoveries out there for the public to use and for other scientists to build upon to keep us ahead of the coronavirus. And it's important to note, um, I would argue, obviously, it's, it's pretty obvious, even from the opening pages of the book, that you're net constructive on this entire effort, constructive on the theory and practice behind CRISPR in general. Did you have that view going into reporting the book? Or was there a point within reporting where you said, you know what, I think this is going to be a long-term social good? Yeah, that's a great question, because my views did change, as does Jennifer Doudna's views, the main character of the book, and the other characters in the book as we progress. Because you're seeing, and you saw it last year, the use of these gene editing technologies, in other words, to cure uh, Victoria Gray, a woman in Mississippi who has sickle cell. And this notion that we can cure once and for all by making genetic changes uh, to, you know, to patients any of these genetic horrible diseases like cystic fibrosis, sickle cell anemia, uh, uh, you know, uh, multiple sclerosis, Huntington's, this is a huge boon to humanity. People worry about, well, 10, 20, 30 years from now, we're going to edit our children and give them, make them tall or give them, you know, green eyes or something. Yeah, that's just something we have to think about down the road, but we should celebrate right now that is being used against cancer. It's being used against blindness. It's going to be used against the coronavirus. And I think uh, this should help us understand the beauty of science instead of fearing science the way so many people these days unfortunately do. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.